Okay, so Raspberry Pi OS has had a major update. We've gone from Debian 12 to Debian 13. This is also called Trixie. So Trixie is running on the Raspberry Pi 500 Plus and I'm running the Raspberry Pi 5 with Debian 12 on the bottom screen. I thought I'd show it like this so we can do a sort of side-by-side -side comparison. Let's get a bit closer. So the Raspberry at the top here is bigger. We have a line separating the two separate parts. We've also got a new font. You can see the wastebasket is very different. Similar up here, but we've pretty much had just a bit of a font change. It's, I do like the new text that they're using on it. So we press the Windows key. Yeah, that new font just looks a bit smoother and we've changed all of the icons here. You can see the old shutdown has changed, the run icon has changed, preferences, help. Yeah, right across the board, they're using that new font. So we go to files on both of these. Yeah, it's a bit more bold in the colors, which I like. The layout has changed a little bit. So what changes have we got in the app launcher? So top three are the same. The fourth one down, graphics, has changed. So we haven't got Image Magic now. I never liked Image Magic because of the way it opens up. Image Viewer is much more modern looking, much easier to scan through photos. Accessories is the same, just with those new fonts. But help has been slimmed down a lot. So you can see we've got Bookshelf, which is our way of launching the Raspberry Pi magazine. And we've just got user guide as opposed to having all these different options in here, getting started, help projects and so on. If we go to preferences, yeah, much less on the options. So they've kind of done it where they've given us a control center, add remove software, hopefully that's changed because I've never liked the software store on Raspberry Pi OS, but we'll have a look in a minute. Recommended software is there, but we haven't got Raspberry Pi configuration, which is interesting. Screen configuration is gone, but we'll show where that is in a minute. Main menu, editor, appearance settings. Lots of things have gone from there. Now, I did have an email from Greg Speakman to let me know that NeoFetch isn't working anymore. So if I try NeoFetch on the bottom one here, it shows me all the information. So if I do the same on Trixie, sudo apt install NeoFetch, unable to locate. So if I do fast fetch, And yes, and now we try and launch it. Oh yeah, it looks very similar. It looks like a bit more information than NeoFetch. So the Linux kernel appears to be the same. A few more packages, newer bash version. The theme is different and the icons are different. So let's go back here and have a look and see what they were doing with that user guide. So what does that do? Oh yeah, so very different to the other way before. This formats a bit strangely. That'll be better. Okay, so having the local information is good. Yeah, like that. And the bookshelf is gonna be the same as we had before, which is where, it runs quick though. Uh, it allows you to download all the old editions and the latest edition of the Raspberry Pi magazine. Now that Raspi config, which isn't here anymore, I guess everything's been moved to the control center. So defaults, desktop, display, yeah, all of that's changed, interfaces. Ah, so some of this would be in Raspi config, or because basically we had a Raspberry Pi config on the desktop and we also have one in terminal. So I, I guess it makes sense that they've called it control center because this is what some of the old graphical Raspberry Pi config would have done. Mouse performance. Printers. See, it's detected my printer already. So it's basically in a different place. Now, if we use the terminal one, sudo raspi dash config, this was always the one that had more control in it. So you can see all sorts of things like advanced options, boot order, and all sorts of things like that. So that's still the same. And also if we right click and do desktop preferences, it also comes up with that control center. And here we can find the new wallpapers. So you can see we've got Sunrise here, which is the new default one. But there's also some others that have popped up. So Branches is new. Yeah, that's nice. We've got Coast, which is new. Yeah, like that one as well. And Field is new. Yeah, a little bit of a throwback to XP. We've got Fronds, what's Fronds? Okay. 
Horizon is also new. That's nice. Mist is new. Yeah, I like that one. Moon is new and Moors is new. We've got quite a lot of new ones. That's cool. And Moors, a bit of black and white. Moody. Peaks is also new. They've really put a load in this time. That's nice. Ridges. Yeah, it's very cool. Nice and crisp. We've got an RPI system dark, which we didn't have before. Yeah, quite like that one. Shadows. Yeah, that's cool. I wonder where they get these from. Maybe it's written in one of the write-ups. Snow is also new. Summit. Sunrise. Oh, that's the one we, we had default. We had trees before, we did, but we didn't have tree line. Okay. And the last one that's new would be turbines. Yeah, it's a nice color. Going back to peaks, I think. Yeah, I quite like that one. So we can show documents on the desktop. On-screen keyboard enabled if touchscreen found. Ah, taskbar, that's what I was looking for. So I quite like it to be large. I prefer it on the bottom. And I quite like to change the color of it. So matching this theme, if we just go a bit darker. Oh, it's not quite the right color. Oh, there is custom here. So let's maybe go, let's go with that. Yeah, that's cool. And then if you need to, you can change the text color as well, depending on how it looks better on that. I think I'll stick with black. And if we tap the Windows key, and if we want to search for something, say Raspi config doesn't come up, you can see images there, diagnostics for speed testing your drive. But if I do control, yeah, control center comes up there. Let's have a look at the add remove and see if that's changed. Ah, so you still have to double click. And I think that's quite an old sort of Windows 70 type thing uh, where you have to double click on things here. Uh, you don't normally in the taskbar on most operating systems. So double click to launch. You can also, if I press the Windows key and do add, I can hit enter and it will launch it. But I think a single click because you can single click it like that and it works. So I think it's just a bit more logical add and then you would single click this instead of double click. So if we try one of my favorites, Xmoto. Yeah, so you can see it comes out. I still, certain things you search for, uh, well that's actually quite clean and maybe they have changed something on that because it, Sometimes it comes up with loads of information on there, uh, way more than you want. If I was to put in something like browser, it kind of shows you like add-ons and all sorts of things and it and is a bit fussy. I know you can always go through this and do internet, but that still doesn't really show me the browsers sort of listed separately. But you can install the Discover Store if you want to, which has a much nicer interface. If it will work with Trixie at the moment, I guess we'll find out. Web browser is going to be the same, just the latest version. Do we have window snapping? No, we still don't have any window snapping. I think part of the thing is as well though, Raspberry Pi OS has to work on much older machines. So you can install a different desktop environment on top of it, which is what I do with KDE Plasma. I haven't tried it with Trixie yet. I think I did a while ago when it was in its early days and it didn't work properly, but I'll be looking at updating mine to Trixie. The great thing about Raspberry Pi OS is it's such a lightweight operating system, really, really well optimized. Let's have a look at the official story about it and see what they've mentioned. So Trixie, the new version of Raspberry Pi OS, new major release of Debian. They're named after characters in Toy Story. So the name's getting increasingly obscure. Trixie's apparently a blue plastic triceratops. Oh, they changed the time system to be more compliant by 2038. All the times have been changed to be 64-bit compliant. So here's about the desktop wallpapers provided by Greg Annandale from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Default wallpaper is a picture of the sun rising over Drakensberg Mountains. Talking about the Raspberry Pi configuration with a new single control center application. All the settings can be found in control center. 
So Control Center is very lightweight, but also configurable, so they can add new things as things come along. Oh, and there's even uh, instructions on how to write a plugin for the Control Center, so you can add your own. And there are instructions on how to update, but they recommend to use a clean image. So they talk about uh, the Raspberry Pi AI hat, uh, TV hat, and so on, not available in Trixie. And this always happens with a new version. If you're using any of these products, we advise you continue using your existing book home image for the time being. Versions of these packages will be made available for Trixie in the near future. And there's some questions here about uh, when will Bookworm stop receiving updates. So Bookworm will be supported for another two years by Debian. And here an x86 port would be much appreciated. I, yeah, I looked at this the other day. The old version of Raspberry Pi OS for like laptops or, or x86 devices, your more traditional computers not running on ARM. And if we go to Raspberry Pi downloads, so if you need the older versions, they're available here. So look, we've even got 32-bit versions of Raspberry Pi OS, the legacy versions, and so on. But the version for x86 devices hasn't been updated since July 2022, and the kernel version is old as well, Debian version 11. So it'd be great to see an update for that. It really breathes new life into old laptops. So it's been tested on older hardware all the way back to Pi 1. Feels perfectly usable on a Pi 3, quicker on a Pi 5. But even on a Pi 2, the main speed issues are booting the desktop from scratch and opening intensive. Yeah, it's, the, it's always the browser. The browser is what kills everything. I think Pi 4 is just so much better for the browser. Obviously Pi 5 is faster, but Pi 4 is still perfectly usable. Pi 3, I would choose not to use the web browser on Pi 3, but certain other things it runs perfectly well. Retro gaming it's great for. Oh, this talks about why the magazines start at issue 31. We don't actually own the earlier issues. The Magpie was an independent Pi magazine, but there is a link here for downloads if you want some of the older ones, and here, archive.org. Okay, so great work as usual. They really do a, an amazing job of getting Linux running on an ARM-based device. So stable, it's so well supported, and all the help and support is there. Just, just a great job. And it feels nice and snappy. If you go to YouTube, yeah, it's, it's nice and snappy. Very lightweight operating system. I'll accept all the YouTube bits. Lee, PSP, video. 4K HDR, let's play a bit of that. Let's go to 1080. So 1080 with stats for nerds. Yeah, it's not dropping any frames. Not sure why it doesn't give me a 4K option. Does it on Firefox maybe? I think, yeah, this only gives us up to a 1080 option. But that's looking good. So I just need to try putting my version of KDE Plasma on top of this and uh, the various different tweaks I've done. Obviously certain things aren't going to work, probably with emulation, maybe PS2, that needs to be tried uh, because we had to do a lot of work to get PlayStation 2 emulation on a Raspberry Pi. So if you're following any tutorials, if it doesn't work with the latest version, just use one of the older versions. Okay, so great work by the Raspberry Pi team. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.